Good morning, everyone. Our blended service is a bit more informal than our 9 a.m. service, but it is lifted up and offered in the same spirit to the same God, to the same Lord and Savior in the name of the Holy Spirit. So we welcome you here to worship today. How wonderful it is to have you here to celebrate with Jen and Jimmy. We welcome you with all of our hearts. Very happy to have you here. I have a few announcements this morning that I would like to share with you. You need to know that I am the last pastor to discourage any sound from a child. Okay, please know and know, know that I mean that. <laughs> I raised five, so I know all the sounds out there. Okay. For announcements today, I would like to remind us that today is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. So we do have some Holy Week activities, which we will share. Um, we're having our grounds clean up on Thursday from 5 to 7, a work day to help get our, our grounds ready for Easter Sunday and to reopen our courtyard. And then on Good Friday, April 15th at 7 p.m., we will be worshiping here together with the Jefferson Presbyterian Church. It is our year to host that worship gathering. For Easter Sunday, we have a sunrise service at 7 a.m., our traditional service at 9, a continental breakfast in between at 10.10, and our blended service at 11 a.m. For our blended service, I'm delighted to tell you that Bob Banerjee will be here to share with, B with BJ in the leadership of music. These two gentlemen are so in sync musically with one another. BJ on keyboard and vocals and Bob with his violin. I know it will promise to be uplifting and inspiring in every way possible. We do have our council meeting coming up for those of you who are on council at 7 p.m. on April 19th. And any committees that should be meeting beforehand will meet at 6. I think we still have some nut rolls and cookie plates downstairs. If any of you would be interested, we had our bake sale yesterday. I see a couple of holy rollers back there. New ones, that's what we call the people who make the roll out the dough, you know. Did you know you were holy rollers? That's an important title. You should put it on all your college applications, okay? I volunteered as a holy roller. All right. Um, but anyway, we have some items left over from our bake sale that are downstairs that if any of you would like to pick some up, please, uh, one of us will be down there to help you with that. I think that's everything that we have to announce for this morning. Are you prepared for worship? Are you ready to lift your voices to God? Then please repeat after me, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, is Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen, let us worship. Our first hymn is Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Thank you. 
Toledo, we always honor children in this sanctuary, in this household. Michelangelo already knows that. He doesn't know he knows it yet, but it's in there. Because we always take time to speak especially to our children on our Sunday morning services. We also want to make sure that any children who will join in worship when our service goes to YouTube are always, without question, included. This is Palm Sunday. Did you know it used to be known as Branches Sunday? Because these are not common in this part of the world, are they? So many Christian communities, many years ago, before you could go online or go to the florist and readily order palm branches, just used whatever branch was at hand. The reason palm branches were used in scripture is because that is what was at hand. And palm branches were used as a way of honoring and respecting and recognizing. So my son Camilo, who I hope will still be speaking to me when I get home today, did me a great favor this morning. He teetered on this stone step in the back of my house where there's a wall that goes up to the next block. And he took my loppers and it's 630 in the morning when it was really kind of still dark. He cut me some for Scythia branches. We might use something like this today to laud and praise and to wave over Jesus as he came into Jerusalem. To our children today, I would like you to know and learn this particular Sunday in our Christian year as a Sunday of rejoicing, but as a Sunday of getting ready as well. You know, you get up in the morning and you're ready, getting ready for school or preschool or whatever you need to do and, and you're being reminded, put on your shoes, where are your shoes, where's your homework? We have to get ready for so many things in this life. Palm Sunday is the beginning of how we get ready for Easter. And we get ready by remembering that Jesus came to Jerusalem and that a crowd came with him. So many people came with him and they shouted those words that we said this morning, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. As you get older, you'll learn more about Palm Sunday and all that follows. But today, just think about what it's like to raise your arms up in praise and to thank God and to think of all of these events in the life of the church, which hopefully in years to come will come to fit you like a glove, part of your life and defining part of who you are. Let us pray. Lord, we love our children so very much. We want them to learn and to know the traditions of our church, of our household, of our faith. And we know that some will be learned by repetition, by learning and doing them over and over again, because that's how we learn when we're little. So let us remember to repeat the stories to our youngest ones. Let us remember to wave the palm branches so that they will learn by watching. Let us remember to share with them in every way that we possibly can what it means to be a follower of Jesus and to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. For our service of baptism today, I will ask you to get out the United Methodist hymnal. For those of you who are new with us today, they're underneath your pew. And as we do that, I will ask Jenny and Jimmy to bring Michelangelo forward and Christy to come forward as well. And Debbie, the lay leader from our congregation who will represent all of our church. <laughs> Christy, bring him with you, absolutely. Vito Jr., you're standing in for Vito. Can you do that today? All right, would you come in front of me, please? I wanted to make sure that those who are, who do not know, Christy and Vito are godparents for Michelangelo, but Vito is deployed at the moment, so he is unable to be with us, but we, we are remembering him today as part of this service as well. 
So brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. What name is given to this child? We present today for baptism, Michelangelo James. And so to parents and to Christy, I ask, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. Will you nurture Michelangelo and Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? I do. And I completely forgot Vito is with us. <laughs> Vito, it's wonderful to have you here worshiping with us today. Thank you so much for the commitment that you make to this wonderful little man here. To all of us gathered today, I ask, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Michelangelo now before you in your care? Help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround him with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Would you please rise? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Debbie, would you please share with our congregation our act from the first service? Yes, this morning at our first service, we had a reaffirmation of our faith, set our vows. We have a, a pledge and a commitment to you, Jim and Jenny, and your family, and to this beautiful baby boy, Michael that we will surround him in love as your Christian family here at Jefferson. One household of faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light in the days of Noah. You saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. He declared his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water, and he who receives it, 
to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. What did you do last week that we have to ask forgiveness of your sins? <laughs> he told me, but he said it's a secret, so I'm keeping it. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. This is pretty exciting, huh, Pino? And it's a little bit hard to understand. We get it. We get it. Can we have one of these two things? Would that help? Uh, okay, Vito, you want to hold on? Vito, you want to have a palm branch for yourself? It's all yours, okay? Thank you. All right. Jim and Jenny, if you would please just step forward. Um, I explained to you that I'm not going to hold Michelangelo. I have grandchildren who are under the age of five, and I respect children with everything that I have. So I'll ask you to hold him while I baptize him, but the minute, the minute we think it's safe, I want my hands on this delightful young man. All right. <laughs> I hope we're still buddies after this. <laughs> Michelangelo, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> <clears throat> I ask this blessing for you. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Now see, that's one of the things we have to repeat to our children as they grow. One of the things that we have to work into their muscle memories of who they are called to be and of who we know them to be in Christ. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, read with me on page 43, through baptism you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus with joy and thanksgiving we welcome, welcome you as, as members, members of the family of Christ. Christ. Jim and Jenny, Christy, turn around and let us present Michelangelo James, our new brother in the faith, to all gathered here this day and to all of this household of faith. And we have a song for Michelangelo. It's in the hymn nets, the last song listed. It's called God Claims You. Michelangelo, Michelangelo, God claims you. God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. have our offering plate in the back if you have a gift to leave. We always, always in this congregation value and appreciate the ways in which we financially support the congregation, but that is only the beginning of our support. Every Sunday we remind our household to think of the ways in which you will give to God through the other resources that God has given to your care. How will you use your time? How will you serve? How will you make a witness? What do you have to offer to God in this week? 
Let's ask BJ to give us some time for thought as he lifts up Hosanna, praise is rising. pray, Lord our God, all that we offer to you today, we offer with an open heart. We know that you are able to multiply our gifts in ways that we cannot even imagine, and so we ask you to multiply all that we lift up and offer to you this day. Our only prayer is that you will find us worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Let me lift up a couple of prayer requests this morning. I would like to ask prayers for my niece, Lisa. She was in a very, very bad car accident, which resulted in every rib being broken, some broken vertebrae, concussion. And she was sent home, I think, so very early. And I am concerned about her pain level and how much help she's getting in managing what she has to do. So pr please pray for Lisa and her family. And I would lift up um, my son Camilo, who was hired as the, I, I said it the first, I can't say teen librarian at the Homewood Carnegie because people think he's a teenager. He's the librarian of the teen resource department. And BJ, we're getting ready for Bo to begin his new job as well as you announced last week. Did you want to say any more about that? What kind of prayers does Bo need to get him ready? Just that he's going to uh, fit in great with that congregation at Cornerstone and just 
just uh, be impactful in, in what he does. He loves technology and he uh, has a, a great grasp on sound, lighting, and video, and he's going to be managing all three of a very, very large ministry. Going to be, it's going to be wonderful, and he will be a blessing. I guess I offer up the praise of thanksgiving on behalf of BJ and myself because we have been going through these last few weeks wanting so much for our sons, and God has provided these wonderful opportunities for them. We also um, always ask prayer for Ukraine and Russia and our brothers and sisters in those countries. What other prayers would you wish to lift up today, please feel free to share them. Obvious. Um, the wife and family of Dwayne Haskins, who tragically died yesterday. Yes, absolutely. Family of Dwayne Haskins, friends. Such a tragedy. Yeah. Others for prayer? We obviously pray blessings on Michelangelo and Jen and Jimmy and all of your family together. Anyone else? All right. Then BJ, would you lead us, please? And he is exalted. Pray with me. Lord, we lift up to you this day prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of praise as we wave our palm branches this day, Lord. We wave them in such a way that we hope that every word of praise and thanksgiving that we know will be lifted, lifted up by these branches to heaven. We know that you hear us. We know that you are with us. We know that prayer is the gift that you have given us, a way in which we can be assured of that presence, be assured of the knowledge that you are with us, present, listening, loving, caring. Prayer is a way of life for us. Sometimes we don't even realize when we're praying. And yet in everything that we do, if prayer is conversation with you, then in everything that we do, we lay our hearts and our minds before you. 
You know that we pray for many around this world. Every person in this household this morning has the name of someone or many on their hearts that they bear before you in prayer this day. We have been praying with our hearts for our brothers and sisters of Ukraine and Russia. We pray for all who stand at borders. We, stay, we pray for all who, whose lives are sometimes dictated by a boundary line. We pray for understanding. We pray for hands that reach across boundaries that we often can't even understand. We pray for hearts that are open to one another, for from such hearts peace arises. Wherever you are needed in this world, and Lord our God, we know that's simply everywhere. So throughout all of our world, where our brothers and sisters need you, we pray that they will receive your mercy, that they will know your love, that they will bear the identity, the mark of your grace. And we pray that in so doing, our world will become a better place, a place that so clearly is an image of who you are in this world, that it will become a place in which justice reigns and peace prevails. Help us throughout this day, this Palm Sunday, and through Holy Week on to Easter to be guided by that hope and by that prayer. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. The Gospel according to Luke, the 19th chapter. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As, he, as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees and the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We had a big day here at church yesterday. We had our bake sale, and it was a great opportunity to meet some new folks from the community and to see some old and familiar faces as people came in to pick up their Easter rolls that we make every year or to buy extra baked goods. We're talking a lot at Jefferson about how our daily work is our daily work, but it is also fellowship. It is also a way in which we find fellowship with each other. And yesterday was truly a day of fellowship. When I left here, I went to my daughter's house. I'm cat sitting. My little Nymeria and I like to watch TV for an hour. So she sits on my lap and we watched TV for an hour. And as I looked back over my shoulder in Kitty's apartment, I saw the sun coming out and I said, what a good time to head home. It's so beautiful. So I got everything ready, walked out, locked the door, got in the car, the sun was still shining. I drove up to my house and the minute I was getting ready to open the door and get out, everything grew dark and the hail started to hit. That little tiny hail that bites. 
What could I do? I was already halfway out. Who knows how long this is going to last. So I got out of the car, got up to the house, and guess what happened? The minute I shut the door and walked around to the front windows, the sun was shining again. And it was once more a beautiful day, at least for probably 20 Pittsburgh minutes. It reminded me of another Palm Sunday weekend. I invited friends from the Emanuel United Methodist Church when I was their pastor to come with me to Mount Washington. Mount Washington Ministerium always held a Palm Sunday parade. So we were going to go. They invited all the area churches around. So I said, let's go to the Palm Sunday parade. And a couple of my families with young kids were gung-ho. They're like, yeah, let's go. So we all get up to the top of Mount Washington. We're standing by one of the inclines. It wasn't a nice day. It was cold. But there wasn't anything falling from the sky at that point. Came time for the 7 a.m. parade to start. And the sky grew a little bit darker, and the hail started to fall. As the leaders of the parade route went to grab the donkey's bridle, the donkey nearly sat down. He braced his back legs so hard. He was the smartest one of all of us. He absolutely refused to participate in the Palm Sunday parade. I always remember this story because Tammy, one of my friends, won't ever let me forget it. She will surely post on my Facebook page at some point today. Hey, Reverend Kathy, you remember? And I will because she told me after that incident, Reverend Kathy, I am never going anywhere. You invite me to go with you again. I left that church in 2004. We are still fast friends. <laughs> this is a day, Palm Sunday, on which we try our best to imagine what it was like, even in a climate that doesn't begin to meet the conditions of Jesus' Palm Sunday. We try to reenact the, the events as the Mount Washington Ministerium tried to do on that day. We would have liked to have been there, waving branches, shouting, Hosanna. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. I think there are some ways in which we like to try to separate this day out from the rest of what we're celebrating. This is the calm before the storm, isn't it? As if this were a day off in Jesus' life. And yet as we think about what was happening around Jesus on this day, it may have been the most tumultuous and telling of all. Remember that Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. And we need to be reminded in our culture that a donkey is a symbol of a king riding in in a time of peace. Jesus' act brought the high drama of the prophet Zechariah with him. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion, Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem, you lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. For Jesus, this day was not a parade, a day off. It was a moment that was deadly serious. A day of finally, openly, declaring who he is. The one who told his disciples and others not to speak of the miracles he had performed was now proclaiming to all around him and in Jerusalem, a city occupied by the Romans, that he is the Messiah, the very Son of God. Reverend Denise Mason, former pastor of the Community of Reconciliation, preached one time that sometimes preparing the way of the Lord means getting out of the Lord's way. There may have been some among his followers who tried to get in his way, who tried to suggest that slipping into the city unseen might be a better thing to do. There may have been some who thought it would have been better for this one who had just raised Lazarus from the dead to lay low for a while. When Jesus told the Pharisees 
that if he told those in the crowd to be silent, even the stones would cry out. Perhaps he was throwing his words back over his shoulder to those who followed him, who might have suggested that same silence out of love, out of fear, out of foreboding. Go forward, he must. Go forward with God, he did. It's important for us to remember because we often think that this moment of proclamation and parade was in the city of Jerusalem itself. It's important for this, us to remember that all this took place as Jesus neared Jerusalem. This is what Luke says to us. As Jesus came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, if you even, if you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Riding on the words of the prophets, Jesus entered Jerusalem. And then for us comes something that is often a great oversight in our lives of faith. Sometimes we slip so easily straight from Palm Sunday to Easter. Triumph to triumph. I want us to think a little bit about what we're going to be doing during this week. And I'm going to ask us to very deliberately and intentionally live Holy Week. Some of you may do that as a regular practice. God love you. Help the rest of us to be better at it. But I'm going to ask us all with great deliberation and intent to take each day and live it in this Holy Week. Our Monday, our Tuesday, our Wednesday are times to reflect. In our household here, we are gathering on Thursday for a work day. And I find it somehow believing that that's pleasing to God that we are gathering to on our hands and knees praying all the way, prepare our grounds for a jubilant Easter. We may come messy to the table when we celebrate Maundy Thursday, but the table will be beautifully set because it is God who sets the table in the first place. So on Maundy Thursday, come, come and join us. On Good Friday, we will be here in this sanctuary remembering what Jesus lived through on that day, lived through for us. We will join with our friends from the Jefferson Presbyterian Church. For many of us, it is not custom to attend church on Good Friday. If you can be here this year, try. Try to be present. We welcome all of you. If you're local, I know some of you came a long way. But if you're here, please join us. And if you can't come to church here, be at church at home. Be at church at home each of these days. We gave out a packet at the beginning of Lent. I'm not going to pull this off because all the books will fall. I just know it. But it has a special devotional guide in it for Holy Week. We have extras. We would love to share them with you. We have other resources in there that help you be and have church at home. We believe that worship among this household takes place on both sides of these doors. So, during this week, either here in corporate worship or as you worship at home, each day, think, pray, reflect. Where has Lent brought me this year? 
We've talked a lot in these last 40 plus days about repentance and about how repentance encourages us to turn more fully to God. We've talked about how repentance asks of us to change direction in the places of our lives that have taken us away from our best faith. I've asked you to seek the true compass of your faith. Where is your true compass pointing in these days as you turn more closely to God? And this week I'm going to ask you to do two things based on scripture. After Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, scripture tells us that he went to the temple. Then he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling things there, and he said, it is written, my house shall be made a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. In the two things that I'm going to ask you to consider this week, I'm going to ask you to remember that scripture and to also to remember the scripture I read earlier about Jesus sending two disciples to find a colt. And he told them, if the owner of the house asks you, what are you doing? Tell him, the Lord needs it. So these are the two scriptures I want you to think about. One, the Lord needs it. And second, what Jesus saw when he entered the table, the temple. So, let's consider the Lord needs it. What does God need from you? What might he send an ambassador to your house to get? What do you have? that helps proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior? What do you have to offer that furthers the kingdom of God among us? We all have something. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you don't. What you have, what you have that Jesus needs, is it ready? Are you prepared to give it? During this week, think of those questions. What do I have that the Lord needs that he might send for, for which he might come himself? And with what I have, am I ready? And then secondly, one commentator I read said, Jesus entered the temple and looked around. I don't think Jesus just threw back the doors, went over to the money changers, and threw everything all willy-nilly. Jesus stopped on the step at the door. And he looked to see what he could see. And we know from the scripture that what he saw, he didn't like. But we have to ask what happened in Jesus' very human, incarnated, yet divine heart at that moment. What happened in the thoughts of the one who knew he truly was, who he truly was in that moment? In the temple, he saw something that needed to be overturned and chased out. If he walked in our doors today, our doors as a household of faith, what would he see? What would he think? What would he do? If he walked into our homes this afternoon, what would he see? What would our Lord say and think? So those are the two things I'm asking you to carefully and deliberately consider. This week, what do I have that the Lord needs? And what does my household, either in church or my home, reflect to Jesus as who I am as a person of faith? And then it is essential to remember that after Jesus overturned the money changers' tables, it is essential to remember that he stayed he didn't storm the temple and walk away leaving a mess. He stayed to teach, to love, to guide. Scripture tells us every day he was teaching in the temple. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people kept looking for a way to kill him. But they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were spellbound by what they heard. Trevor Williams, one of the 
authors that I often read says that this is so because Jesus came not out of love of power, but out of the power of love. As we walk together through this week, whether present physically with one another or not, think of each other. Pray for each other. Seek the wisdom of Jesus' teachings. Be present. Come to church. If you can't come to church here on this hill, come to church within. Get ready. Easter dawn brings new possibilities, new ways to be a people who worship a God who wields not the love of power, but the power of love. And lest you be afraid, let me remind you that if your true compass in this time of Lent and approach to Easter is a degree or two off, remember, Jesus stays. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, let's try again. We're going to start from scratch. And the people said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go forth with the blessing of God, our Father, our Creator, Jesus Christ, His Son, and our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, who breathes for us with sighs too deep for words. Bear that blessing upon you, and all will be well. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you want to come up, I say this every Sunday, and greet our little one, please wear a mask.